Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to provide you with an overview of the financial statement effects from disposing of your fixed assets. So let's take a look. Um, there are basically three options that a company has when it decides it no longer needs a fixed asset. One, it may sell the asset. Two, it may what we call retire the asset. Or three, it might exchange the asset, which is really just another version of selling. So at the end of the day, this is really like two and a half ways of, of doing it. Um, when you sell an asset, that simply means you're getting rid of it, but you're getting something in return, typically cash, right? Um, when you retire an asset, that is when you are getting rid of it and you're not getting anything in return. Think of this, not to put it crudely, but think of this as throwing the asset away. When you exchange the asset, that's when you're, you're kind of, I guess, upgrading in a way, so to speak. So you give up the asset, um, but maybe it's because you're putting it as value toward getting something else. You might have to combine it with a little cash outflow, something of that nature. Um, but like I said, that's that's really kind of a combination of that, that's a version of selling because you're you're selling that asset um, um, as value toward a, another purchase essentially. So what happens from a financial statement perspective? Well, let's start with our balance sheet. You've got to remove the gross value of the asset. So if it's a building, you've got to get rid of the building account. If it's a uh, equipment, you got to get rid of the equipment account. If it's land, you got to get rid of the land account. Right? So whatever that historical cost that's sitting in, in that main asset account, you've got to get rid of that. Assets or debits, how do you get rid of them? Well, you're going to credit the account, right? So this is going to result in credit the asset. That'll get rid of it. All right, next up. If your asset has any accumulated depreciation, and that accumulated depreciation needs to be up to date, up to the point of disposal. It can't just be, oh, we recorded a few months ago, right? So including any partial depreciation that needs to be recorded up to the disposal date. Um, you've got to remove that depreciation as well. Think about the way these things work. On your balance sheet, you typically show asset less accumulated depreciation, right? Well, if you get rid of the asset, what are you subtracting the accumulated depreciation from? It, it doesn't make any sense anymore. So when you get rid of the asset, you've got to get rid of that accumulated depreciation as well. Now, accumulated depreciation is a contra asset. So to get rid of it, we are going to have to debit the accumulated depreciation, and that'll eliminate it off the balance sheet. And of course, if you are in a situation where you were either selling for cash or exchanging for some other asset other than cash, you've got to go ahead and record any asset received. Um, so, in, you know, if you're selling, then debit cash. If you're exchanging for, say, a piece of equipment, debit equipment, so forth and so on. Now that's the balance sheet. What about the income statement? Well, in the event that you need to record some additional depreciation prior to sale, you're gonna go ahead and record any of that partial depreciation. That's only if applicable. Maybe you're selling right at a year end or something where your depreciation is up to date. It may not be applicable. And most importantly, and probably more common, record any gains or losses on the sale. So to the extent that the, say you sell for cash, to the extent that the cash you receive is more than the book value of the asset, you're going to have a gain. So cash received, uh, sorry, I'm having trouble writing there. Cash received, if it is greater than the book value of the asset, then you're gonna record a gain. If it is less than the book value of the asset, then you are going to record a loss. So gains are essentially revenues, um, not as part of your operations. And so they're gonna show up in the non-operating section of your income statement. You might see gain on sale of building, gain on sale of equipment, or maybe more generically, gain on sale of fixed asset. Um, losses are the opposite. They're an expense, but a non-operating expense. So they show up in the non-operating section of your um, income statement as well. Um, and this is just a way of telling investors, hey, we had an asset with a certain book value. We thought this is what it was still worth. And either we got paid more than that, and so we actually profited off the sale of it, or we got less than that. So we lost on the sale of it. Um, but this was not inside the normal course of business. This was just us doing a transaction outside of normal business. That's why it goes in the non-operating section of your income statement. 
All right, so that's it. That is your overview of fixed asset disposals. Obviously, I didn't walk through any example problems. I just want to kind of set the stage, but I'll have example problems in other videos where I'll walk you through the actual math of, of calculating disposals and putting together the journal entries for that. So um, with that said, I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.